Hey folks, my name's Carl, and I like to make tiny, nerdy- <laughs> Hmm? What's that? That's already taken. Okay, well, what about- Hi everyone, my name's Carl, and this is my hole. <laughs> nah, that doesn't sound quite right either. Do you know what? Just play the opening stinger, and I'll work the rest out later. <laughs> well, my friends, it finally happened. I actually prepared for something for once. I know, right? I'm as shocked as you are. With that in mind, we'll start on the iPad in Procreate, where I wanted to make a basic sketch of what a more realistic version of Link's Master Cycle from Mario Kart 8 might look like, and it kind of ballooned from there. What if we threw in some Bokoblins? What if they were throwing bombs at Link? What if the flames on those bombs were green? What if Link was kitted out with many items from his different adventures? What if Tingle and a mate were standing off to one side, and oh look, he's dropped his ice cream. Poor scamp. And I must really hate myself, because that's a heck of a lot of work. So without further ado, let's get on with it. We'll start with Link's Master Cycle. I quickly realised that I'm nowhere near skilled enough to build a motorbike totally from scratch. So we'll do a kit bash using this 1 to 12 scale model of a Honda CBR1000R. Why did I pick this specific model? Well, it was the cheapest semi-decent model kit I could find on Amazon. I mean, it's not going to set anyone's world alight. For example, look at the packaging here. They've used a stock photo of the bike and just passed a motion blur brush over it. But that kind of minimal effort warms my soul and kind of matches the tone of these videos. So that's something, I guess. So let's bust this bad boy open. First impressions are good. There's a fairly comprehensive manual here. We won't be needing that. Nice fairing. We won't be needing that. Front mudguard. Not going to use that either. Front forks have come out of the packet a bit bowed. But that's fine, because we're going to be chopping one of them off anyway. Wheels. Very important part to any vehicle. Nice chassis and engine. And it's even got a fun little speedo, but we'll be chopping that off. No need for the brake pads, because who uses brakes in Mario Kart anyway? And the same goes for the wing mirrors. And finally we've got this nice selection of screws, of which we'll use two. We'll start by drilling out a hole in one side of the engine, to make way for one of the many LED lights that's going to be in this kit. You see, I noticed when looking at reference images, that behind Link's Hylian shield that's strapped to the side of the Master Cycle, is tucked away a little glowing blue Triforce. What does the blue glow represent? I don't know. Probably that the engine runs on the power of love or something like that. But regardless, that's a cool feature. Let's add it in. Next up, after having given the fuel tank a good sanding in preparation for painting later on, we'll remove and put to one side the petrol cap, which we'll also use later. Here I've made the first of four hubcaps for the wheels, using a combination of polymer clay and Lego. Yes, I'm still doing that. But so as to not use more Lego unnecessarily, we'll make a mould of this hubcap using a two-part putty. And once that's cured, we can shove a load of clay in there to make the other hubcaps. And whilst that mould is curing, we'll attach the front forks and the fuel tank to the chassis, and then start to modify the saddle, to give it more of a rugged cafe racer look. And Link is definitely no slouch, but even his buns of steel need the occasional pampering, so we'll add lots of diamond-shaped padding to the saddle. Next up, we'll start making the horse-shaped head that goes on the front of the bike. <laughs> easy boy, easy. Good boy. The core of our stallion will be made out of a mixture of balsa wood and then bolted out with some foam. Then we'll cover that in a layer of clay. And I can already hear you asking, Carl, doesn't foam melt in the oven when heated? Yes, it does. Wouldn't that potentially compromise the whole sculpture? Yes, it would. Did I go ahead and use foam, even though I knew that was going to happen already? Yes, I did. Am I a total idiot for doing that? I think you know the answer. And even after all that, I couldn't be bothered to remake the whole head, so I just tried my best to integrate the damaged parts in, which is a theme we'll revisit later. But for now, we'll drill a little hole to place our LED headlight in. Which as a side note, got me wondering if headlights for horses is a thing that actually exists. And wouldn't you know it, they do. We're living in the future, man. Next we'll reinstall the fuel cap we removed earlier, and then to give the suggestion of a dual speedometer, we'll bury a green LED in the neck, and then cover it over with this plastic piece that is totally not Lego, but it also is absolutely Lego. Then we'll give those lights a quick test to make sure they're working, and also install a red LED behind this exhaust piece for a brake light. Then once we've fitted our horse head to the fuel tank, we'll run a thin strip of air dry clay around the edge and then poke a load of tiny notches in it to try and make it look like a welding seam. 
Next up is the radiator cover, which on the master cycle looks a bit like a shield, so using some rolled out clay will make it flat and then lay it onto the fairing of the model, which will give it the curve it needs before baking it in the oven. We'll then give it a little test fit and realize that it's actually far too big. So off camera, I'll make and install a smaller one. After that, we'll fit and install the wheels and their hubcaps. And I wanna have it noted here that the wheels are totally static, they don't move. But the suspension still works. I mean, that's pretty awesome, right? Then we'll slap on some leftover pieces I had from a Gundam, and they'll act as the clips that hold Link's shields to the motorbike. We'll also use these two identical Gundam parts. Wait, I mean, these two identical Gundam parts as frames to hold some saddlebags on the back of the bike. The saddlebags themselves will be made out of clay, but we're just going to make one for the moment, because we've got something fun in store for the second one, which will be revealed in the next video. Did I mention this is going to be a two-part video? Make sure that you click that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and click the bell icon so you get notified as soon as it comes out, so you're ready for it. Anyway, smooth segues into calls to action aside, we're now going to make the foot pegs a little bit more game accurate. To do that, we'll tightly wrap some string around some wooden doweling, and then stick on the end of it some more small Gundam pieces, before giving the area where the foot peg's going to go a good sanding, which will help the super glue to adhere more solidly to the bike. And with the foot pegs fitted, that's pretty much the main bulk of the bike done. But what would a Zelda project be without a Hylian shield to go with it? So we'll print out some templates I found on the internet, making sure to scale them to 125 scale to match the bike. We'll use the template of the Master Sword and Link himself in part 2. Did I mention there was going to be a part 2? I don't remember. But just for now, we'll cut out the Hylian shield. Then we'll carefully lay two pieces of rolled out clay on top of each other, making sure not to apply too much pressure so that they don't stick together and then using the template, we'll cut out the shape of the shield. A hobby knife will help us to surgically remove the edge or frame of the template from the center, and then that center piece will be laid onto one of the layers of clay, then we can cut out the pieces we need to make up the frame. And once those frame pieces are in place, we can start to add the other details, like the Triforce. I've also put it onto the back of a paint palette to give it the curve it needs, and added some damage detail to the right-hand side to make it look like this Hylian shield is a bit battered and bruised. And finally, we'll slap it in the oven to bake in our progress. But unfortunately, I may have slapped a bit too hard, because when it came out, it looked like this. But again, I can't be bothered to redo it, so this shield will just have to be extra battle damaged. But with the two pieces safely welded back into place, we can start to add some more details. And with that sorted, we can give the whole thing a good coating of silver paint mixed with a bit of black to give it a bit more of a gunmetal effect. Once that's dry, we can start to paint the shield in the traditional Hylian colours, before adding some chipping using some off-white. And with that out of the way, we can start to paint the bike. Before we do, I'll tape all the wires together, partly to get them out of the way, but also to stop any paint getting onto the wire itself. And then we'll smoothly transition into our paint setup before airbrushing on a liberal layer of black primer. This step was probably totally unnecessary, but I wanted to overspray a bit of white paint to see where the lights and shadows would be after which we'll start to put the main blue base layer down. Then using that gunmetal mix from before, we'll paint some sections of the bike to give some contrast. Then we'll paint all the brown and beige sections before going back over the chassis and the engine with some black chipping. For all the gold sections of the bike, I'll use a mixture of gold paint mixed with sand yellow and then we'll use some more of the off-white to add some battle damage, which I can also use to integrate and, more importantly, cover over some of the foam-melting baking error we had before. Then it's just a matter of painting on a few more details, and then we can add our blue glowing Triforce. Next we can add a few accessories. Now, on the original design in Mario Kart 8, the Master Cycle has two Hylian shields, but that doesn't work for our realistic version of this bike. So instead, I went ahead and made one of the base shields from Breath of the Wild. Then we've got our saddlebag, to which we've added some side pockets and a grappling hook and rope. And then finally a little Sheikah slate, which Link can use for a GPS. Then it's just a matter of adding those accessories on, 
finishing the wiring for the LEDs, making a temporary base out of foam to cover up the battery and wires, and I'd say we're just about done here. Thank you as always guys for watching the video, I really hope you enjoyed it. As I mentioned this is part 1 of 2, so please look forward to the next part coming out very soon. And remember to subscribe so you don't miss it. Besides this one I've got a lot of projects in the pipeline that I'm very excited about, hopefully you will be too. So until the next one, cheers and have a good one.